adolescents and adults with autism. You can absolutely use the principles of applied behavior analysis across the spectrum, across ages, and throughout life. Uh, I think one of, unfortunately, a major misconception is that applied behavior analysis is only effective with young children, utilizing discrete trials, which is more sitting knee to knee, reinforcing with M&Ms. Uh, the principles of behavior are used across the lifespan and across humans in general. And if one day you're wearing a green shirt and your husband tells you you look great in green, it's going to increase the likelihood that you're going to either wear that shirt again or that you're going to purchase more clothing in the color green. And that's just a very basic principle of applied behavior analysis. So it's important to realize that it might look different for different ages, but it's something that is effective throughout the lifespan. What role can medication play in addressing challenging behaviors? When considering the use of medication for challenging behaviors, the best time to do it is when there is a consistent behavioral plan in place. Medication in and of itself is not going to diminish a behavior. Uh, instead, what it'll do is make that individual more open to learning the strategies that the behavioral plan has put in place for them. When should I consider residential placement? The decision to consider residential placement for a family member is obviously a very personal one. And uh, one thing, of course, that you want to consider is the safety not only of that individual that's having the challenging behaviors, but the safety of the family, possibly other siblings. Um, and then even once the safety issue is addressed, if that individual's life is severely restricted and, for example, they're not able to access the community and they're basically in lockdown in the house, you have to consider that individual's quality of life as well as that of the families. So um, that might then be something that you would want to look into. Where do siblings fit in with all of this? I, I think that siblings obviously are a big part of any child's life and it's very important that they remain a part of the team, uh, not because they're being told that they have to or because they're being told, you know, that's your brother, that's your sister, you have to accept them, you have to bring them everywhere with you. Uh, that individual, that sibling has as many rights as, as his brother or sister does. As much as you might feel as a parent that this is a very difficult thing for that your other children to deal with, and it is, and acknowledging that is important, but it has a lot to do with who that sibling becomes and the kind of person that they grow up to be. So the biggest piece of advice I can give is to answer their questions, to acknowledge their feelings, even if they are feelings of embarrassment or shame at times, um, and helping them to understand what's going on and be a part of the process and letting them know that you do have a plan and that they're a part of it. Any general advice for families dealing with challenging behaviors? I think in particular when you're dealing with an individual with a communication deficit, it's most important to do what you say you're going to do, to remain consistent, and to establish a rapport and a level of trust with that individual so that when you are in a crisis situation, you're going to be able to more easily move through that crisis situation and keep the repercussions to a minimum.